what's up guys welcome and welcome back to my channel in today's video i will be covering a question i got in the comments a little while ago the question was basically asking what my salary is like compared to someone who works in the same position as i do but who has a license if you didn't already know i'm a clinical laboratory technologist however i only have a bachelor's degree in biology i did not take a mls or cls program and then sit for licensure so if you're interested in finding out what i do and how much i get paid then stay tuned so before we talk salary i just want to talk a little bit about what i do as a clinical laboratory technologist and what it is a little bit. So clinical laboratory scientists, clinical laboratory technologists, medical laboratory scientists, those terms are typically interchangeable. The only time where you will see a actual definition difference is when you're using the term technologist versus technician. A technologist is someone who has a four years degree in something, whether it's clinical laboratory science or medical laboratory science or a life science in general and a technologist is someone who typically holds an associate's degree. So that's where a difference comes in when you see these different names thrown around. So scientist, technologist, interchangeable, technologist, technician are two different things. As a clinical laboratory technologist, we are the ones who are performing the test on behalf of physicians and the patients. So basically whenever a doctor needs a test run, specific test done for their patients, Patient to help with diagnosis and treatment, that's where we come in and we do those tests. Just as a x-ray tech is going to perform the x-rays and give them to the doctor, they aren't going to do them themselves. Whenever blood work is done, you go to a phlebotomist and they draw your blood. Your primary physician doesn't do that for you. So that's what we're here for. We're working behind the scenes to get those tests for patients and their doctors. We don't typically interact with the patients. Like I said, if you're a phlebotomist, then obviously you are the one drawing blood for them. Other than that, we don't typically work face to face with the patients. The lab that I work in is a reference laboratory, specifically a molecular diagnostics laboratory. And so what we do is we perform the tests for different clinical trials going on throughout the United States. So we get samples from California, Florida, Israel, Germany, anywhere you can think of, we've probably gotten samples from them. We get samples from doctors, specifically who are not necessarily working on clinical research, but are requesting this type of testing for their patients. We get samples from universities who are doing these clinical research trials. So we get tons of samples from everywhere. And we specifically are doing cancer testing. In my lab, we have two different procedures that we use to perform our testing. The first procedure involves um, emulsion digital PCR and using magnetic beads and flow cytometry. And the more sensitive acid that we use is like an enhanced form of digital PCR and it involves assigning each DNA piece with a unique identifier. We use these procedures to diagnose all types of cancer um, depending on what the researcher or what the doctor is requesting. So we test for breast cancer, colorectal cancer, pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, skin cancer. We can test for different genes, just one gene mutation. We have tons of options for these different researchers and doctors who are requesting tests from us. The simplest way for me to explain how to become a clinical laboratory scientist or medical laboratory scientist is basically you can find schools that do have these programs that specialize in these programs as an undergrad and what you will do is take the required classes and you will also have a clinical portion once you've completed your undergraduate degree you are eligible to sit for licensure once you've sit for licensure and you pass then you can start applying for jobs not every state requires you to have a license in order to work as a cls or mls i will put some of the states on the screen that i found so it's up to you whether you want to specifically major in a MLS or CLS program. However, I will say that most jobs, whether you are in one of these states or not, would prefer for you to have a certificate or license or whatever in order to work there. So it'll probably be a lot easier for you to get a job or to expand your job options if you have a license. Okay, so getting into the salary portion of the video. So when I was looking up these different salaries and averages and things like that, I wanna say that I did use the term specifically clinical laboratory technologist. I'm not sure if it will be a big variation depending on like, you know, the different 
word combos do you use? But if you want, you can definitely look it up yourself. But for the numbers that I'm giving, I will be giving for a clinical laboratory technologist and I will be giving a national average and I will also be giving the average for my state, which is Maryland, because obviously with different states and different cost of living, you will have different average salaries. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So to start off with, the national salary according to Zip Recruiter is around $60,613 a year. To keep in mind that this is not for entry level and not for someone who's been in this career path, you know, for X amount of years. This is probably like right in the middle of your career. It's around the 60,000 mark. So for Maryland, the entry level salary is around $41,110. For mid-level, it's around $61,800. And for top or seniority, you're gonna average around $84,050. Again, obviously these are all averages, and this is specifically for my state of Maryland. I will post a screenshot of some of the averages for some of the other states, and again, these averages that I'm gonna post for all the other states are the mid-range, it's not like the entry and then like seniority. So keep that in mind, it's gonna be like the mid-range of salary. I was entry level when I started. I got my first job last May. It was my first job in this field. So obviously I was entry level and I was coming in with zero years experience. As of this recording, I am a year and three or four months. So still not that long, still under the two year mark. And as I said, the entry level for Maryland is around $41,110. I can say that my salary offer when I first started was higher than that, so I did not get paid that $41,110. It was more than that. And at the year mark, obviously you have your yearly review and I did get a raise. So again, I am above that base entry salary of $41,000. And again, I do not have a license. I am just working with my bachelor's degree in biology. So I would say looking at these numbers and then comparing to what I am getting, I would say that I make about the same or I'm probably on par with those who do have a license and working the same field. No one in my office personally has a license or certificate in MLS or CLS. So we are all working with just our bachelor's degrees, um, typically from biology. Um, I think there's like a bioengineering degree, chemistry. So like the basic bachelor's degrees in life sciences is basically what everyone in my office has. So there are supervisors, there are leads in my office who, again, are just working with a bachelor's degree. So it's definitely doable. You don't need a license. Again, it will probably be a lot easier to find a job and to get into this field with a license, but it can definitely be done. All right, guys, that's all for this video. I tried to make everything as concise and clear as I could, so hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you still have questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will answer them as best as I can. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.